Uh, so before we start on the next use case of service loss plant integration, let's uh, let me uh, reiterate on few points what we covered in the uh, last video. So in last video we have seen how to pull uh, service now CMDB data in S Splunk, right? Uh, and for that we we used this add-on Splunk add-on for service now. So we were successfully able to pull the data from service now CMDB table to a Splunk index. Uh, however, uh, before moving further on the next use case, where we will see how to how to create the incident. Uh, using the Splunk alert uh, in service now. So before proceeding on that, let me uh, uh, reiterate on few points uh, uh, about the last session. So this is the uh, app what add-on that we used last time, the Splunk add-on for service now. So this is using this add-on, we have created a integration between Splunk and service now. And uh, I have explained you like how to get the test account on service now, and then how you can uh, do it for learnings. Uh, you how you can avail a test instance of service now, and then using that you can test it like how to pull the data from service now CMDB to Splunk. Okay, well, so let me just show you a few more points. So if you go here in CMDB CI dot CI table. So I'll, let me try to create a new input, try to pull the data here. But before that, let me create a new index for this. So we will be pulling the data in that new index. So let me quickly create snow. Okay, I'll leave everything as default and we'll create the index. So it's created now, so now. So let's, using this index, let's try to set up a new input to pull the data. We'll go to service now, inputs, create new input. And we'll give a name like snow to Splunk index. The account we will use, so this account I have already configured can see in my last video how to configure the account. And the data we are going to collect from CMDB CI table. Collection interval, I'm leaving it 60 seconds. So what does it mean? It means that every 60th second, the job is going to execute and it will pull out all the new records. So I'll explain you like how it works basically. So here, if you see the time field of the table, so this is the field on which this input is going to rely on any record which is updated after this start date, that's going to pull out in the next execution. So what does it mean? If you leave it blank, right? It's going to take a start date before seven days. So like, for example, today's 25th of Feb. So by default, it's going to pick a start date as 18th of Feb. And in each run, it will check if this field has the date greater than that 18th of Feb, and those records it will uh, pull to Splunk just to avoid the data redundancy and duplication. So if you leave it blank, it's going to take uh, seven days. So I'm leaving it blank for now. Included properties. Here again, if you leave it blank, it will pull out all the columns of the table, whatever columns you see here, right? It will pull out all these columns in the Splunk index, excluded, like either way, you can define either included properties or excluded. So I'm leaving everything blank for now. Index, I'm going to use the one which we have created now. Okay, let's create this input. Let's see where it is. Snow to Splunk index. This is the one we have created. So we haven't enabled it now. And if you go there, You won't see any any data here, right? Because we haven't enabled the input yet. So nothing, it's blank. Okay, let's go and try to enable this input. So as soon as you enable this input, it will pick the start date. As I explained, by default, it will pick the seven days before the current date. 
So today is 25th of Feb, it picked 18th of Feb. The time, the current time is stamped in GMT. Uh, because my uh, the, the Splunk server where it's running, that's in GMT time zone. So now this input, how it will work? It will check for all the records in this table and it will pick only the records which which have the updated date greater than this date. So this is our start date, right? So if we check, if we have any record for 2024-02, let's see if we have any record. 2024-02, nothing. We don't have any record for Jan. For Jan, we have few records. So it, it will not pick any record. Even if you go here, if you check it, you don't see anything here, right? Despite of enabling this input, how to check that, why it did not pick any logs, you can, can go to Splunk's internal logs, just run it for last 15 minutes. And you can check the relevant source type logs. So in our case, it's snow. So TS no ticket. I can log this one. Check for using wildcard. Yeah, TS no. This is the one. So just remove this. Okay. So if you see the logs, this is the input we created, right? Snow to Splunk index. Snow to Splunk index. This is the input. And if you see the logs here, data collection completed. It's so incompleted. Got a total of zero records. Why? Because it has that condition of updated on, right? Says updated on. So it will look out for all the records which got updated after start date. The start date is 18 of Feb because we kept it, uh, left it blank. So by default, it picked the day before seven days. But since you do not have any record which got updated after the 18th of Feb, it's not pulling out any data and then saying that got a total of zero records to pull, right? So this is the point I wanted to cover it because in last video, I think I missed to uh, explain like how to check the logs, how to troubleshoot if you don't see any data from the same data table and how to fix it. Even if you check now, there won't be anything, right? because it, it got zero records to pull. So how to fix it? Let's go to this input, edit it. And here, if you see, it's saying a checkpoint for this input already exists. Selecting no will reset the data connection. So what we'll do, we'll set it to no. We'll change the date to, let's pick a default date, like two years back. So now it should pick all the records which which have got the updated date greater than that start date. So now our start date is this, 18th of Feb, 2022. So now if you go here, check the logs, data collection starts for this. It has integration ending the case, refresh it. And you can see got a total of 2660 records from this endpoint. So now if you go here, you will see the logs. So we it has successfully pulled the records from that table. And since we, we did not define anything in included properties, excluded properties. So we did not define any columns there. So it's pulling all the columns by default. So this is the point I wanted to reiterate in this video before moving on the next use case. Okay, so now I got a request like, I mean, what we are doing currently, we are pulling the data from snow tables to Splunk, but I got a request to explain the the other concept. Like we we just, I mean, I briefed about two use cases, right? Pulling the data from service now table to Splunk and then the vice versa. Creating the alerts in Splunk and then getting them uh, 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 work as a as an incident in service now. So now next, what we'll do, we'll create a 
report here a uh, alert here and we'll see if that alert is being pushed to service now to create an incident and for that we will use this same connection because this configuration we have already completed right it's already integrated with the service now uh, on this url right so on this same url we'll see alerts being pushed from splunk to service now so for that let's Let's go to this, pick the incident table here, and see all the records. Currently, it has 186 uh, alerts. I think I created one earlier, so let me disable that. I will disable this one so that I can show you how to configure it. Fine. Okay, so we'll create any sample alert here, maybe like on the snow index only. Stats count by source or something. Okay, it doesn't have any data in the last 15 minutes. Let's run it for all time. Okay, and then I will just display. Okay, let's take host. Host is not there. So it's on a startup. Okay. Table. Post count. So I'll pick these two values. Okay, so let's save it as an alert. Paste alert. No incident. So now in this use case, what we are doing, we'll see how we can push a Splunk alert service now. And there are again two things. The one is you can post the Splunk alerts as an event to service now, or you can directly create an incident in service now. So what does it mean? Like if you post the alert as an event, then you can define your own event rules there in service now, the workflow, how you want to treat those events before converting those events as an incident, right? Or you can directly post the alerts as an incident in service now. So we will see how like the other second case where we'll see how this Splunk alert is being pushed in service now as an, and how it creates the incident there. So let's configure it on the run schedule. So the, I'm configuring it to run every 15 minute for now, but we'll change it later. So here, if you'll go to service now, right, you'll see two options, event and incident. If you push it as an event, it will not create an incident though. It will just land as an event there. And then you need to refine the workflow there, event management workflow, how you want to treat those events in service now before, uh, uh, before converting those events to an incident or alerts, right? And here, the second option where you can push this alert as in, and it, it can directly create an incident in service now. So let's see this option. So we'll use these this same integrations, no test. You can leave everything blank here. But here endpoint, if you see the default, it says it will be calling the it will make an REST API call, but on this table, but this table does not exist there. It's access like whatever name you see here, right? This table is not there. The table here is incident because we are on the test environment. But in production, if you have that table, you can use that or you can define your own table. So what we'll do, we'll pick this endpoint and we'll change this table name to incident. Perfect. So now we can save it. 
and i have configured it to run every 15th minute but i don't want to wait that longer so let's change it to every one minute and save it so now we should be seeing that alert coming into service now and it will create an incident here how to check that so you can go to all and you can pick the incident table here pick all and you got this because this is the one we got we did not define any sort description or anything so this is the alert we got from splunk let's make it more relevant by defining the sort description here let's pick the same description okay Let's close this one, wait for its next execution. Let's see, test alert to snow incident. So as soon as the alert is getting fired there in Splunk, it's creating an incident here. And now you can take it forward from here, like you can assign it to the relevant group, whatever the workflow you want to define, you can do that, or you can handle the tickets man incidents manually here. So, I mean, uh, having said that, I think we have covered both the use cases where we have seen pulling of the data from Snow CMDB to Splunk and vice versa, where we have seen now how to process Splunk alerts to service now. So I think, yeah, uh, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.